comes in many colors and wears many faces. Around the world it goes by many names, spirit possession, spiritual trance, soul journey, nirvana, ashk. The word ecstasy has interesting origins. It comes from the old Greek word ecstasis, which literally means to stand beside oneself. In many cultures around the world, this often life-changing experience has a spiritual dimension. Today, we will explore the mysteries of the ecstatic experience, where the seeker, God, and creation all become one. We've invited two guests from two very different cultural backgrounds. Andrew Harvey is an internationally acclaimed author and scholar who lectures on mystical and spiritual traditions around the world. Raised in India, Andrew is the author of many books on faith, mysticism, as well as several books on the Persian mystical poet Jalaluddin Rumi. Sabonfu Someh is from the Dagara tribe in what is now Burkina Faso in Central Africa. Sabonfu is a healer, a shaman, and a teacher, and is widely regarded as one of the most powerful and beloved teachers of ritual and ceremony in our time. Welcome to Global Spirits in Search of Ecstasy. Sabonfu, how do we even begin to talk about ecstasy? It's one of the great mysteries of life. There is something within us that is yearning to be alive and to be um, in that divine balm of energy. At one point, you know, the mind goes away. Right. And, uh, you know, something else emerges. The soul and the spirit start to rise. And you can really see them come alive. And, and that's what we're really yearning, you know, to be able to come alive in such a powerful way that we are not standing in our own way. That's it. Can we talk about it without having experienced it? I think everybody actually has experienced it in one way or another, just as I think everybody has experienced the divine. I think people experience it in dreams, people experience it making love, people experience it dancing, people experience it looking into the eyes of children, and I think everyone is hungry for it at the most primordial level. Sema aynı bir yolculuk. Sema yapan semazen burada Allah sevgisini içinde hissederek her dönüşte Allah Allah diyerek bir zikir yaparak dönmesinde sonuçta işte ne bileyim Hristiyan Nirvana'ya ulaşması gibi Through the teachings of Rumi and others the Sufi message of all-embracing love has been spreading to the West, giving tens of thousands of Westerners a new access to the mystical, ecstatic aspect of Islam. The state is probably that of non-being, which occurs in any meditation, actually. If you do a sitting meditation, like in Buddhism, you sit and you don't move, and everything disappears. And in the Sema meditation, you move and you do this repetitive movement and again everything disappears. Sema actually means dance of the planets, celestial dance. And so we're actually just uh, showing you that the planet that you are sitting on is turning but you're not getting dizzy. And the planet itself is turning around the sun and you're still not dizzy. And the cells in your body are turning around themselves and still you're not dizzy. I also don't get dizzy when I do it. And I'm just showing you, actually, physical truths that are also figurative, spiritual truths. <laughs>
I feel like I'm, I'm part of the actual atmosphere. Like it's not me dancing, it's, it's me with everybody else dancing. You just look around and you can tell that everybody else is in the same place that you are. Feels like um, we were in a cage and someone let us free. You've got absolutely amazing frequencies coming out of those speaker boxes. Once you start dancing for a while, you just start to resonate with those frequencies, like they go right through your whole cellular structure, so that your whole body system starts to vibrate. When you're dancing en masse with a number of other people, you start to all vibrate within that frequency. Yeah, drugs is part of it for me, but only in the sense of I have as much as I need, not as much as I can. energy all together and and looping it higher and looping it higher and looping it higher through repetition through dance through becoming sensitive to energy within ourselves we begin to have an opening a gateway to our higher self how do you feel when you watch that form of spiritual yearning is it equivalent? Should there be distinctions made? What do you see there? Um, I really think that uh, you know, uh, the fear is uh, it, it definitely a critical element here because a lot of us, you know, would like to explore a lot of things in our life, but we are afraid, you know, <laughs> what my wife going to think, what my husband going to think, <laughs> and what my neighbors are going to think about me. <laughs> and so I have to be cool and keep everything to myself, which then not only create narcissism, but it creates also disruptive behavior, right. um, which can then make you inflict pain onto others and Yes, so because forth. if you repress the ecstasy that you're secretly hungering for, then that goes into depression, that goes into weird behaviors, that goes into perversion, that goes into exactly. violence. Exactly. Ecstasy belong. the expression of ecstasy is at the core of all authentic societies because they all know that that is what heals, that is what elevates, that is what unifies, that is what inspires. And if you don't give people permission to lose control in that holy way, Way, they'll find it in other very dark ways. Absolutely. And it's what my grandmother used to say. If, <laughs> if something is not meant to be there, there wouldn't be a word to express it, you know. <laughs> and so when we're yearning for something, some, sometimes we don't even have a word for it. You know, you don't, you, you only taste it or you smell it or it's a faint echo that you hear. But we're all yearning for something bigger and it's that Static um, moment with the divine that we really yearning for, oh, but yes. we resisted, you know, and we fight it, and we have, you know, all kind of things, fears, well, and I think we fight you know, judgment. It. Don't you think we fight it because actually, although we say we want bliss, although we say we want love, although we say we want unity with the Godhead, actually the experience changes everything, and we don't want to give up our tidy little agendas, we don't give, wait, give up our depression, we don't want to give up this narrow little strip of grey in which we live our lives. We want, right. The ego wants to be in control, even if it is of a very depressed being. Yeah, but also because those things have become our identity, yes. and here is yes. an alternate option, and we do not want to take that. And, and, I and we have nothing in this culture that allows us to think of our identity as having an ecstatic component. That's right. Because our identity has to be cool, has to be functional, has to be efficient, has to fit into the great death machine yeah. that our culture has become. And because also when we experience that aesthetic, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? Right. And what will happen to me, I might actually become very happy That's and right. uncontrollably joyful That's and right. annoy everybody. Exactly, exactly. So I must repress it so I can confine with the crowd. Right. So welcome to misery. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non commercial use only. Link TV is the only US network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.